So in a bottom line business, the 49ers offense didn't play well enough to beat the Chiefs. They made a ton of plays in this game, but they also made a bunch of mistakes. And it was the offensive line. It was Brock. It was Debo. It was McCaffrey. It was their best players. It was Kyle Shanahan. And I want to go through all of them. And I also want to go through a lot of the positive. So it was honestly one big chess match where at the end, like Steve Spagnuolo and the Chiefs got the better of the 49ers. But it was one of the most entertaining games. And unfortunately, the 49ers were on the wrong end of it. So let's walk through everything on the offense. So I don't expect everybody to agree with me. And I'm just sharing my opinion. But when you watch plays like this, to me, the 49ers were at their best against the Chiefs running these gap schemes, right? Running running plays where a lineman is pulling across the formation, where Trent Williams can get downhill and get his hands on the second level linebacker. That's when they had their most success on the running game. I felt like they relied too heavily on the zone running game and they just didn't have success doing so. And if you were to tell me on the first drive of the Super Bowl that the 49ers' best offensive weapon would cough up the ball, I just wouldn't believe you because we don't have evidence of this happening. So the last time Christian McCaffrey fumbled was three and a half months ago, so week seven, on I think it was one of the opening drives against the Vikings as well. So if you watch right here, you'll see, or sorry, you'll hear running backs coaches all day say, the ball needs to be high and tight. The ball right here is at his waist. Even the best players in the NFL will fumble when you don't have like the precise details. And the 49ers paid for it here. So there's six points off the board. This, according to win probability and EPA added, was the second biggest blow to the 49ers in the, in the game offensively anyway. So like they lost um, 15 percentage win probability and they took off um, nearly six points in EPA added. So just that can't happen, right? Against anybody, let alone a team with Patrick Mahomes. I think the double whammy here, if you watch Kittle, so he's he doesn't know where the ball is at this point, but when he goes to dive in, I think right there is when he suffered his upper body, upper body injury. He didn't tell us what it was. He just said it was a hockey injury, but... That was the only play that I could tell, you know, where it looked like he was banged up. But coming back next drive, okay, the Chiefs predominantly are a man-to-man team. After the game, Brock Purdy was like, like, as much man as they ran kind of surprised us. Knowing that, and this isn't a great example just because it's not man coverage, but knowing that, funneling the passing game through Debo instead of Ayuk was one of the biggest head scratchers for me because he is a clear-cut star when it comes to route running, when it comes to beating man coverage, when it comes to winning one-on-one period. So we didn't see enough of these type of plays. And instead, like the passing game, as I mentioned, was funneled through Debo. But like this guy, man, he is a very special player. And I am, and I'm going to show you clips all throughout the game where like he's open all the time. And based on the route, based on the concept, he just wasn't as involved moving forward because obviously they're going to build around Brock Purdy is his maturation process, is taking the next step of playing quarterback. So here, Troy Williams gets flagged for a holding call. Mind you, this was one play after he's flagged for a false start. So the drive's dead, and yeah, it's a good play right now. Brock Grady keeps the play alive, keeps his eyes down the field. But if we go back, this hold is on the quarterback. It's not on Troy Williams. Like, you leave the pocket like that, Troy Williams doesn't know where you are. He's expecting you to stay in the pocket. So that's on Purdy. Look to the bottom of the screen. Like, it's zone. And how do we know it's zone? It's because the cornerback is guarding a running back. Yes, it's not just any running back, but Sneed followed Debo or Ayuk all game. So he does a terrific job right here of just taking the first read away. That's been open all year because it's been against a safety or a linebacker. So what Brock Purdy needs to do instead of tucking the ball and dropping his eyes, which is something that he didn't really do consistently, I should say, he just needs to reset and go to his next read. So first read's not there. Okay, let's just keep it moving, right? So instead of he's not open, let's go to the next progression. And he's wide open right here. Obviously, if he's not comfortable with that, just keep going down the line. So you see Brandon Ayuk running a return route. He's going to make him fall. I mentioned how much of a star Ayuk was. It doesn't show in the box score, but he was open a lot in this game. So I can see why he was so frustrated. But at the end of the day, you get called for a holding negates an explosive play that would have been a first down but we need to see purdy stand tall in the pocket right 
need to see him just because the opposite color flashes doesn't mean he's going to have to tug the ball. Like, yes, there's pressure in his face. He gets pushed back, takes away his read. All he needs to do is just slide, right? Pocket movement, not pocket bail, pocket movement. If he does that, he's able to slide, hits Jennings here. And who knows what happens because like he, it's against a safety who's not able to run with him. So like that's going to be a big learning part of Brock Purdy's game moving forward. And there were a few times in this game where it just came back to haunt the 49ers. So moving forward, I was surprised that we didn't see more of this type of formation. And not just empty necessarily, but these little three-man stacks, three-man bunches where watch how it plays out. So it's just an easy throw. It's a screen. Watch. Everybody's blocking. Nobody's running a route. And you get one of your best players, Debo Samuel, free yards. That's a free first down. And for whatever reason, Shanahan just didn't spam these kind of plays. Over the course of the season, he did. Like, he would go back to something that works instantly over and over and over. I think we only saw this three or four times. But look at that. Like, he's not touched basically until he gets to the first down. When he does take on a defender one-on-one, Debo does what he always does. He makes him miss. So that was, and I don't want to make this seem like I'm pointing the finger. I'm just talking through the game. But I was a little surprised that there weren't more easy throws like this for both Purdy and just getting Debo involved. All right, so this is the same dagger concept that this team has been running all season. From the other side, Brandon Ayuk's going to run a vertical route and clear off the coverage from that side. And then Debo's going to run a deep in-breaking route after the coverage is cleared. So for a timing route to work, your quarterback has to play on time. Like this is what, this is how this play works. It's predicated on timing. Instead, you can see the extra pats. You can see Purdy. Um, I don't, we wouldn't see from where his eyes are here, but if you don't play on time, like that's the difference. So here, seconds drop, check, check. So his back foot hits. And then there's a pat. There's another pat. He's still sliding. As we know, like Debo's open right now. He's been open the whole time. And he's a little late. Because he's late, he has to force it right. And that's why the throw is inaccurate. So, again, like you don't have to be perfect. You just have to play on time. And I'm not pointing the finger at Brock because he did make plays in this game. But there were plenty of throws that he left on the field, which he acknowledged. And to ignore those and act like he played perfectly would just be, I'm not going to lie to you. So, Again, as a team, they did not play as well as they should have. And it's plays like that. that you, you can't leave yards on the field against Patrick Mahomes. So, next play, which is crazy how they make up for this. And, and this just shows you how explosive this offense can be. So, we have Chris Conley as the number three wide receiver. Chris Conley, yes, against a free safety. Why they did not target the safeties more in this game is beyond me. Because they had crazy matchup advantages and i thought like the reason i was confident the 49ers would be so successful in this game is because i thought it would be played in the middle of the field i I thought they'd target justin reed watson like they do on this play um mike edwards 21 right there like i would stay away from 38 and 22 because there are they are stars but the rest of this chief secondary not so much so the pass protection holds up purdy throws it on time and you get a chunk play here and these are the type of plays why the 49ers will build around Brock Purdy. So we have Brandon Ayuk running a deep corner route to the bottom, to the top of the screen. Ray Ray McLeod is going to run a deep in cut. I, I think it's a read route, honestly. I think if he feels like he can get on top of the safety, he would run a post. But since there's so much space, he does this wise thing and cuts it off and flattens his route. What we'll see is the check down. And the whole point of this pr- play is to put this linebacker in a bind and make him think so. Christian McCaffrey is going to come up. He's going to chip. And then he's going to sit down. Watch the linebacker right here. He has no idea where to go. He turns his back. Now he's in no man's land. As I said, too much space here. So it's first and 10. He's open, right? Check check it down. He's open. No, that's not how he thinks. That's not how he processes the game. That's not how he's ever played the game. And this is why Kyle Shanahan loves his quarterback. Because these intermediate routes are open and have been open for as long as I've been watching Kyle Shanahan. Now he has a quarterback who is comfortable and confident throwing those routes. And this is why the 49ers were as successful as they were all season, because Brock does not care about the check down. So the line does a good job here. You got to give him time for these long developing routes to develop, obviously. And he does. So everything is on time. Purdy finds McLeod, hits him in stride. 
and that's how you get another chunk play. So two successive chunk plays in a row, checks down or avoids the check down. Love that. And you get another first down. So when I say it was a chess match, like this is a perfect example. So they use Debo in this role a few times where he would be right here and he would just run the bubble. Kai is going to come out, act like he's blocking and he bluffs and runs up the seam. Brent Ayuk can come in, act like he's crack blocking this defender right here. And then he runs up. This like it's perfect, right? Everything is there. As you can see right now, Brandon Ayuk is wide open. You've seen, I'm sure you've seen analysis from this play and people are going to blame Brandon Ayuk for slowing down. To me, like I, from my vantage point live, it looked like he just had no idea where the ball was. And that was the case for a few 49ers players running in this direction. So I don't think he slowed down. And honestly, it's objectively, this is an overthrow, right? Like if you just put the ball anywhere shorter than that, he's probably able to uh, pick it up and catch it. But he doesn't. So the reason that I think it's an overthrow and the reason that this should be a touchdown is because he is flat footed right now. Like He has no idea that he's going to keep going vertical, probably based on his tempo, but throw the ball maybe at the goal line, maybe two yards past the goal line. Like There's a five yard window that Purdy has here and he misses it. And that's a touchdown. And that's more points left off the board. So, again, the protection is there. The scheme is there. But the execution isn't. Whether you want to blame Purdy, whether you want to blame Ayuk, point fingers at who you want to, but the execution is not there. And that was consistent, unfortunately, uh, for the offense. It was it was way too much Jekyll and Hyde from this side of the ball. And that's not something that we've seen all season, which makes it probably more frustrating when they have to rewatch this. And one of the reasons that I thought the 49ers should run more gap schemes is because plays like this. So when they ran their zone stuff, it was just wonky. Like guys were stepping the wrong way. And the Chiefs, like their D tackles, whooped the 49ers. Here's McKivitz right here. So you have him with, but that's tough just because they're slanting the wrong way. Like when you look at it from the other angle, though, or this angle's fine, everyone steps in the same direction except this player right here, John Feliciano, who had no problems calling out Spencer Burford, but when you're running this kind of zone scheme, everybody steps one way, right? Everybody's stepping to the right, so he should step right and then climb. After he secures this block, so Colton McKivitz could have him. So ideally, he gets to a half, he gets to a half, and he climbs up here. So uh, Feliciano's on Twitter calling out Spencer Burford. Like, These plays, like, how do you ignore that? So again, man, when when I tell you there were so many mistakes from everybody, it it was unfathomable, and that's why they lost. So now it's third and fourteen, and you have to take a shot down the field. And that, that's a really good job by Brock right there, just avoiding. You also see from the other angle, CMC does a really nice job. But if this is a post route, and oh man. So he's running this late motion that they love, but he has to cross his face right now. You cannot run the hump, run outside the DB expecting to win on this route. Ask any wide receiver coach. Like You can't do that. So to me, this is on Debo right here for taking the lazy way out. And that's easy money for McDuffie. McDuffie had Debo in a headlock all day. So third and 14, I mean, not much you can do, right? You're not expecting to convert. Watch McCaffrey in the backfield. I mean, Chris Jones, who was just, oof. He was a monster in this one. Beats Aaron Banks right away. McCaffrey's not even expecting to pick him up. Does a really nice job of scanning the field. Purdy avoids. Purdy still keeps his eyes down the field. And, I mean, those are the plays that why Shanahan loves Brock as well. But incomplete pass on third and 14. Wasn't Probably wasn't gonna, weren't going to complete it anyway. Okay, so Brock just scrambled, had the horse collar penalty tacked on, and this is how they followed up on first down. So on the right side, which, whew, not great, all game, both offensive linemen leave the defensive tackle to climb to the second level. Like, what is going on here? So watch Trio right here, who's, again, struggled. So yeah, the defensive tackle, obviously, is who you're trying to block. And they don't. They both leave him. What? Ideally, like in a perfect world, right? Here's how it should be. So Burford steps to this half. You have to split, get to a half. You're never going to take him on full on. So you get to this half, secure him, get to this half, you climb, and now you have Kyle Juszczyk coming down, and that's how the run should work, and maybe Debo's able to break it. Instead, 
So there's a cutback. Oh, look at this, man. In what world would you have a play where you're running the ball and you just leave the tackle unblocked? That's not a trap play. There's just no excuse for that. Not in the Super Bowl. Just can't happen. All right, very next play. Watch the right tackle. Zone play. Whiff. So in my mind, if I'm Kyle Shanahan and I see this consecutive plays, like we are running our core running plays, right? Our zone schemes and we cannot block it. Just scrap it. Stop running these plays because they don't know what to do or they just flat out cannot block these players. Like he is a star. There's no doubt about it. But you at least have to get a hand on him, right? I man. You just don't give yourself a chance when you're doing this. Okay, so on the next play, it's third and long, and now you're playing right into Steve Spagnuolo's hands because he wants to bring pressure. And he doesn't even bring pressure, but because the running back is blocking, the extra linebacker who's supposedly going to hug rush can just come after the quarterback. So it's easy money. And now look at the field. Who's open? Now you can allocate extra extra players in coverage. Nowhere for Brock to go. And he has to eat a sack. And again, when I tell you that like the matchup between McDuffie and Debo was so one-sided, so one-sided, unlike I've ever seen this year against anybody cover Debo. I, I just would not have believed you. Like I, I understand that McDuffie is a very good player, but I did not expect him to dominate the matchup in the way that he did. Um, honestly, like it doesn't seem like the line did a, that poor of a job. It was really a covered sack. There's nobody open. He's looking. Like Where am I supposed to go? Nowhere to go. Has to eat a sack. Like That's not on the quarterback. That's not on the offensive line. It's on the receivers for not getting open. So, we're 20 minutes into this video. The score is three to nothing. The Chiefs have done absolutely nothing on offense to this point. So the 49ers, ample opportunities, even right now, to put the Chiefs away. And they still haven't. So this play, great design. So what's going to happen is Debo's going to run a now slant. McCaffrey's going to come in motion and follow him. So it's a follow concept. Kittle's going to clear out. Purdy's staring right down the barrel. And he wants Kittle on the seam. So what happens here... As soon as he sees Bolton turn his back right here, like he has to come off that. Safety's over the top of it. Linebacker's undercut. That ball needs to come out now. Like it's called a now slant for a reason. Watch, watch Debo. There are no steps up the field, right? It's just across the middle right away. Now slant. So now, now, now. Ball's late. Ball's low. And that's a drop. So your, your quarterback's not playing on time, not getting it, moving his eyes fast enough. And then when you do put it in a position for your, your, you know, one of your better wide receivers, like he has to make that catch. Like in the Super Bowl, there is, there are no excuses. But again, like when I'm talking about the mistakes that they made, you can't blame the line for this. Like he has plenty of time. He's scanning the field, but that's a drop, man. Just, uh, that can't happen. There, I don't know. I don't know what else to say, but. Leaving yards on the field against the Kansas City Chiefs, like it, it, those are inevitably going to come back to haunt you, and they did, over and over and over. So second and three, short yardage. The Chiefs owned the 49ers. So again, like they're just trying to get to the outside, right? Elijah Mitchell trying to use his speed, but they can't because Chris Jones once again uh, disrupts the play. As you can see, he's going to the strong side. What needs to happen here? He, Spencer Burford needs to get his head across. He needs to work to the outside half of Chris Jones. Watch Aaron Banks get to the outside half. Watch him get his head across of the defensive tackle. Like there's a difference of having your head across. Even if he gets pushed back here, that's okay because you did your job and you cut him off. He cannot cross your face. I understand that he is a gap outside of him. He's It's a little more pronounced than right here. But your steps, getting your head across, keep fighting, keep working, like that has to happen. And it doesn't here. And that's why I imagine, like, based on this game, whether it's Burford or it's Feliciano, they have to invest in the right side of the offensive line. And I'm not talking a day three pick because that's not going to cut it. If you're going to build around Brock Purdy and that is your franchise quarterback, you're going to have to protect him. And that means you're going to have to be able to run the ball, not just to the left side behind Trent Williams, but to the right side as well. Okay, so it's first and 10 into a blitz. Chiefs are going to bring six. 49ers, they're going to slide 
to the right. So it's going to be three on three either way. There's going to be an extra rusher regardless. And Brock's going to get hit because that's a part of playing quarterback. And what happens? Sneed, this time, just bullies Debo. Like, he can't get off of the press. And he just doesn't have a chance. My problem with this play is, like, I've said this all year. How do you beat a blitz? By throwing into it. So here's the blitz coming off the edge right here. And instead of throwing into it, they throw away from it. Like, Debo's is a hot route. So Brock does a perfect, like, he does his job. He's going to where he should go, where he thinks he should go. To me, this is a Shanahan thing, right? So if you want to protect your quarterback, if you want to beat the blitz, the best way to beat the blitz is by throwing into it, replacing the blitz. And that's just a route scheme. Like, he was never going to be the hot route. Maybe it should have been him. Maybe that's something you work on in practice. And he, instead of running a deep cut right here, it's three steps shorter. It's one, two, three now, because look at the middle of the field. There's nobody there. There's nobody protected. Like there, there were endless mistakes, but this is a scheme coaching issue. And like, he was never going to be able to get Ayuk on that level, on that layered route right there. Debo has to win. Like if you do go that way, it has to be Debo and he has to win, but you have to go on the other side of the field. And I know it's so easy to say this after the fact, but me saying throwing into pressure and beating a blitz that way is nothing new, but they do it here or they don't do it here. And you, you get an unnecessary hit on your quarterback and you have an incomplete pass. So, I mean, just add that to the list of mistakes and we're not even halfway done here. So on one play, I criticize Shanahan for, you know, not having the right built in hot route. On the next play, he dials up one of the best calls that you will see in any Super Bowl. So, you get a, a half wide receiver pass, throwing it all the way across the field to Christian McCaffrey. Juwan Jennings plays this about as well as you can. So, he's looking down the field, down the field. I'm going to throw it here. I'm going to throw it here. Of course, he's not going to. But why does he do that? He gives all these heavy players time to get out there he's trying to draw the defense over here with his eyes and watch he does that like all these couple steps of them going over here that matters and because of that mm, christian McCaffrey goes untouched into the end zone so again one of the better calls that you'll see in the super bowl and now it's 10-0 so the difference between zone and gap right with zone gap we have linemen pulling and watch how much successful the offensive line is when they're able to move, right? Get on the field, sorry, move laterally. So instead of trying to. All right, here's a gap scheme run and it's just going to be power. So Felicia is going to pull. Everybody else is going to block down. Charlie Warner, amazing job in this game. Positive yards. That wasn't the case whenever they ran zone. Uh, watch the left tackle. Watch the left guard. Like they're climbing. They're getting to the next level. Um, oh man, I, I'm surprised that Shanahan just didn't ditch those zone runs. And look, first down. Come back to these um, gap scheme runs. Okay, so off that pull, you're in the shot zone, right? Forty to forty. So you want to take a shot down the field. Every lineman is stepping down. Every lineman except the left guard, and that is Aaron Banks. And whew. There are some wide open players here. So, I mean, if he does step down, watch how the play works out. If, if Brock does have time, Kittle now, like he's going to be wide open if he has time, but they can't get there. So mm. another mistake by the left guard. Let's go fast forward to here and see what I'm sure what I'm talking about here. So the Chiefs, again, incredible game plan. Spags blitzed like hell. He's he sees the pull this player and he's going to blitz off it and he's going to come free. And when I say step down, I mean, every, like everybody's stepping down. You can see they're, they're running into each other. They're stepping down. So he steps here. Banks ideally steps here, picks up Chanel. Feliciano's trying to get to Chris Jones. He's pulling. He would have this edge player. And then he has the defensive tackle. That's how the scheme would work. And everybody's blocked up and Christian McCaffrey would probably be able to chip him and come out free, but it doesn't happen because a mistake. And now your quarterback's running for his life, takes another hit and has to throw the ball to bounds, wasted first down. Okay, so now we have 
third and 15, fresh off, and Aaron Banks, false start. So it's a three-man rush, and you see the linebacker there. It's like he's just hug rushing. He's not blitzing. And I think that really threw off Brock when he saw another linebacker up. So he's just, when I say hug rush, he's hugging the line of scrimmage, waiting for the quarterback to declare. It's a quote-unquote spy. Same thing. Like he's guarding the running back, but he's really eyeing Brock Purdy in case because knowing that, you know, he's probably going to stay in the block. So your eyes have to move to the next target if you're Purdy. And I don't know, like he... He really locked on to wide receiver or one target in this game. And on this play, I'm not saying that Brandon Ayuk or George Kittle pick this first down up, but he's like, he's going to be open. He's going to be open. Maybe they break a tackle. Maybe they do pick up the first down. Maybe it influences Shanahan to go for it on first down. But the issue is like whenever his first target wasn't open, like here, he's looking for Debo on the corner. Like he wants to go to Debo. Debo's covered. So he knows that. His eyes drop and he bails. Remember I was talking about pocket movement earlier. Whenever the opposite color flashes, that does not mean you have to tuck and run. This is a maturation process for Purdy moving forward. Remember, 24-year-old quarterback. He's never seen something like Spags before. Not to this level anyway. So maybe stays in the pocket. Gives Ayuk a chance. Ayuk has an enormous amount of separation here. When I tell you Ayuk was frustrated after the game, it's probably because of plays like this where he feels like he was open all game. Again, I don't know that he picks up the, the first down, but he definitely puts Kyle Shannon in a position to make a decision to go for it or not. Okay, so that was right after Jair Brown's interception. So you wasted that opportunity to put points on the board. It's 10-3. to 3. You forced another punt. You have another opportunity Make this a two possession game. So on this play, we're going to watch the right tackle and Colton McKivitz does not do what he is supposed to do. And that is block Chris Jones. Because of that, Brock Purdy has to pull out a Houdini act. He does what any quarterback would in this situation. Just get the ball out of his hands, throw it to the first target that he sees. In an ideal situation, this ball goes out of bounds. Instead, like in no way am I faulting Brock for this because uh, seriously, like every quarterback would do this. He sees his receiver open. He's going to throw it there. But now it's second and 19. Again, just really tough to live, get past a Chiefs defense this caliber when you're playing behind the chains like the 49ers did in most uh, of their possessions. So, I mean, it could be second and 10, second and 18. And yeah, the drive's pretty much over there. Watch the bottom of the screen. He is not going to like watching this back. So Debo Samuel just can't even cross Snee's face right there. McCaffrey ends up getting a reception, but it's just a really rough one as far as man goes, beating man coverage for Debo. So on the next play, third and 11, it's going to essentially be a slot fade. So Brandon Ike's going to come up and run an in-cut. George Kittle's going to run the slot fade. The one time Debo does win, thanks to a little scissor release here. So switch release. Uh, Jennings going to run an out route. Debo's going to stem inside and run the corner. Debo actually is wide open on this play. But if I'm Brock, like, how do you look his way after what I just showed you, right? Like, he knows that he's been struggling to get open. So I'm not going to blame Brock for not throwing the ball to Debo. But watch the bottom of the screen. He is open. There's no doubt. Like, right here, like, that's a first. But he picks the right side because he's going to the player that he thinks has the matchup advantage. Are you going to throw it to Debo on, is that Watson? It sure is Watson, isn't it? Dang. Instead, he goes to 27, who's a backup safety. And that was another situation I mentioned where they were struggling to find the ball in the air going this direction. Like, watch Kittle. Like, he has no idea where the ball is right now. And they have to punt. How many times in the last three years have we seen this happen? When I tell you things that happened in this game that have never happened, that like, there's no bigger play than that. Who, who have you seen? take on Trent freaking Williams like that and throw him to the ground and be able to make a tackle on McCaffrey though. So this is first and 10 and now you have a second and long situation. So on the second and 10 situation, Brock predetermines his throw. So you can see they're going to motion out to the trips. It's a, another one of those follow concepts that are, sorry, it's actually a levels concept. So Brian, are going to run the deeper out? Debo's going to run the now. And 
McCaffrey's going to run the second level where he's going to be up and run the return route. Purdy should be reading the cornerback here. Don't predetermine where you want to go. Let the defense dictate, right? Let the defense tell you where to go. So if the corner sits on Debo, throw the now. So if the corner sits on Debo, then you can throw it to Ayuk. If he bails, then you throw the now. So let's watch it play out. Watch what the corner does. So corner bails. So Debo, 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 Debo. Like he's open right now. That's where the ball should go. Purdy is assuming that he has Ayuk, which maybe it seems like he's open, but that little pump right there, right here, right here. There we go. That little hesitation gives the DB enough time to catch up. And now the ball's late and it's an incomplete pass. So again, like the plays are there. When they are there, the 49ers didn't execute. And this is, again, just Brock growing up, right? The maturation process, he's got to acknowledge that I cannot make up my mind before the ball is thrown where I want to go. Just got to let the defense make that decision for you, in a sense. So, man, um, second and 10, incomplete pass. So now we're going to come back to third and 10 on the next play. So you have Debo Samuel against a first rounder, Trent McDuffie who's right here and you have Brandon Ayuk to the bottom against a fourth rounder who is right here Chiefs are in two-man coverage and that just means you have two high safeties and everybody else is in man when you're playing two-man coverage your DBs can be super aggressive they can squat and they can be in trail technique and by trail technique it just means he's underneath him like he is right here and he can sit on anything underneath McDuffie just did a phenomenal job and maybe it like I don't mind Brock giving his guy a chance. You have to give him chances. Third down. Maybe this is a Shanahan issue where, hey, it's man coverage. This guy, he was already banged up with a hamstring injury. Why are you not funneling the passing game through Ayuk? Right? Like he's open. In my in my mind, he's open right there. And there's just way more room, way more space. You got three receivers over here. There's nobody. It's just one on one with the entire half of the field. Hey, maybe before the before the uh, play call, as the play call is coming in, hey, Brock, we're going to isolate Brandon. Hey, let's give him a shot. Instead, the passing game was funneled through a player who wasn't 100%, who clearly could not separate all game and plays like this. Uh, it looked there were a lot of reps like that. So um, uh, very head scratching in a sense. And tough to blame Purdy for this, honestly. I would say, like, if you do want to play the blame game, uh, ask Shanahan why you know there weren't more plays directed at 11 instead of 19, especially based on who was guarding who, right? I'm taking my chance on a fourth rounder and over a first rounder any day of the week. All right, so Chiefs are up. It's 13 to 10. Bottom of the screen, Brandon Ayuk, open. Ball's tipped. So even against an all-pro, LeJarrius Sneed, Brandon Ayuk's open. What needs to happen here? Like, you have to get into the chest. It's going to be Brindle because they're going to pull. You have to be able to get into the chest of the defensive lineman. Can't lock out so he can't get his hands up, right? Like, you have to be aggressive. Pass pro is not passive is what you'll hear a lot of offensive line coaches say. So, essentially, I don't know if you want to call it jumping him, but just letting a guy that size tip the ball when it was it was an easy eight yards, maybe even a first down. Now you have second and 10. Okay, so third and five, third and manageable. When they get into these situations, like Shanahan can call whatever he wants to. And here's what happens when you don't throw it to LeJarrius Sneed or Trent McDuffie. So you have Juwan Jennings against that fourth rounder that I said. And look at that. Look how easy that is. He's a very good player, restrictive free agent, so he should be back. But these routes are like shooting fish in a barrel for Jennings. So great release. And then he has him leaning. He has no idea where he's going. Honestly, you, you can make a strong argument. And I know what Debo means to this team, but he was clearly not healthy. And that is on the coaching staff for not adjusting. So funnel through Ayuk, funnel through Jennings. Maybe use Debo as a decoy. But if you're, if you're just watching Debo, let's watch him. Let's go back to the top here and watch him. Like He's clearly not able to burst in the same way that he usually is. Does that seem like a guy who's 100%? Of course not. But talking about funneling through your number one player, like I'm not saying I 
do in no way do I mean that they should throw it to Brian Ayuk here. I'm pointing this out to show you that he wins all the effing time because he is that good of a player. So right here, boom, he's up. Look at that. He has Sneed on skates. Look at Sneed right here on a, just what? A eight, nine yard route? He damn near did the freaking splits, man. Again. How he does not have 10 targets is not a Brock Purdy thing. It is a coaching thing. So play is how you get Debo involved, right? So he's going to come in motion, and they're going to run a bubble off another little three-man surface. And that's how, I mean, right? That's what you want to do. That's when how you want to get 19 involved. Watch the blocking. This is the type of intent that you have to play with on every down. So he just stops him in his tracks as he has a full speed, right? That is impressive. This is McDuffie. Boom. Jennings does what Jennings usually does, and you still nine yards off of a bubble, off an easy throw. Again, we did not see a lot of that for whatever reason. I'm not sure why. Look how heavy the, the Chiefs are in the box. They have their heavy personnel. They probably could have done this about seven to ten more times and been okay with that instead of running the little zone schemes um, where the line was just getting their butt kicked against the Chiefs' heavy personnel. So, again, I hate playing the hindsight game. But it just seems like, you know, you want to live on the perimeter if you are going to, quote unquote, get Debo involved. OK, first down, fourth quarter. Brent Ayuk against a safety. So the motion works. The motion is lovely because now you dictate who guards who. So you have Snead on Samuel and now the entire middle of the field with your best player against a safety. Doesn't matter who the safety is, you're going to take the matchup. And here's how it works. Just no chance. Zero. Look at that separation, man. Look at how he sets him up, how he stems. So he stems wide. Boom. One, two. And just mm, good night. Uh, this was a 100-yard game for Ayuk. Okay, so off that shot to Ayuk, or sorry, that in-breaking route to Ayuk, Shannon wants to take a shot here. Right outside of the red zone. It's a perfect play call. So you run the stretch. You get Debo. Who wins? Beats Snead off the line of scrimmage. Easily too. So he has a reputation for just being uber aggressive. And he wants to jump you at the line of scrimmage. Debo does a great job here of avoiding. And he's wide open. But Purdy doesn't put in the ball play. Or sorry, doesn't leave it in the field of play. You're going to see from this angle. So let's talk about the right guard. That's Spencer Burford going against Chris Jones. To me, he does a great job here because, and obviously, you know, he could do a better job, but he takes Jones where he wants to go. Jones is already set outside of him. So from here, there's not much he could do here. I think he does a really nice job of taking Jones where he wants to go as an offensive lineman in pass protection. That's your job. I think this is on Purdy. I think Purdy has too much fatness footwork. I think he drifts and it needs to be more of a vertical drop instead of a horizontal drop. So there's a stretch, right? I don't understand why he's sprinting in this direction. I don't, that does not, I don't know. I don't know why that would be the case, right? So to me, it should work out like this. So there's a handoff and then straight vertical, right? It shouldn't be a horizontal drop. It should be one, two, three here, set up and throw. Instead, he runs right into Jones. I want to see the drop again. So handoff, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there's an extra step in there, a drifting a little bit. Ooh, that's six. That's touchdown left on the board. And I mean, it's, I don't want to blame Purdy for everything on this play, but it's the fine details of quarterbacking and being a professional probably fortunate not to get a hold there but you just can't miss that throw and honestly it's a lot of what happened because before he even threw the ball which brings us back to his footwork so another uh, big play left on the board and this is where i would like shanahan to adapt and acknowledge that your zone runs have not worked all game so this is third and two a huge play and instead of running that gap stuff that we were talking about it's just zone and what are you doing you're relying on your Weakest links in a sense, one, two, three, to win. And they didn't. Like Chris Jones isn't even on the field right now. And the 49ers can't get a push. 
He's on the other side of the line of scrimmage. He's on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Linebackers don't even have to do anything because the defensive line makes a play. To me, it should be an easy gap scheme, right? Where one tech, one tech, head up, head up, pull. Whatever, whatever direction you want to go to, pull and make one of these two players run into him. And now it's just him one on one with whoever's flowing from the backside. I would take that as opposed to relying on essentially like players who are probably going to be backups next year, right? Ah, yeah, yeah. Burford doesn't block anybody. I don't know where he's going right here. So it's his own. So you. <clears throat> McKivitz is on the ground. He's on two knees right now. This is third and two for the freaking Super Bowl, essentially. Man. That I. I would really struggle watching this back um, if I were the 49ers offensive line. It's just a lot of mistakes, and, and it's physical mistakes, too. I, I remember, Chris Jones was not on the field. But I think this was a frustration call for Kyle Shanahan after that last play because in most cases, he just settles for a field goal here. At the same time, like he did talk about during the week, like we know you have to be a little bit of a risk taker knowing that Mahomes on the other side. So what do you do? You isolate George Kittle, I think this was his only reception all game against a safety. And against their safeties, you're going to take these all day. Easy pitch and catch. Brock does a good job of identifying the matchup, throws it on time, throws it out in front of him. And so that is important as well. So if this throw is on this shoulder, he has to turn back in. He's probably short. Throws out in front of him. That way Kittle can turn up right away with no wasted movement. And you get a first down. Okay, so first down. Heavy front. They're going to blitz. Uh, yeah, this guy's coming. They're going to bring six. How do you beat the blitz? You throw it on time and you replace it. What does Brock Purdy do? Throws it on time, replaces the blitz. Juwan Jennings, oh, he should have been Super Bowl MVP. Like if they win this game, he's hands down the Super Bowl MVP. Um, this is a really good job by Brock. This is a good job by the line, right? You have to protect your inside, knowing that they're going to bring six. So he releases. So now like, Purdy's going to get, <laughs> he's going to take a hit no matter what. But because he's playing so fast, because he's playing on time, he doesn't. And that's how you get the touchdown. So a really good play, as simple as it seems. And then, now you know, kudos to Juwan for breaking a the tackle there. And the 49ers regain the lead. All right, just under six minutes to play. Tie game, fourth quarter. Bottom of the screen. Juwan's going to run deep in breaking route. Brock just needs to read this person right here. So he's going to actually come out as a safety or drop out as a safety. Again, you got to credit the Chiefs. I haven't done a good enough job of that. They were incredible this game, especially these two players right here. But Brock's just reading the linebacker. If the linebacker stays underneath, throw it to Jennings. If he drifts, throw it to Debo. He stays underneath, balls out on time. Jennings has another big play. And based on how he was performing as a route runner, these are the ways that you get 19 involved. Like I was sitting in the back end zone angle. Like I was sitting right around here. Right here, I thought he was gone. I thought he had enough to get out. But isn't this where we see a healthy Debo Samuel burst out? And I know like, he doesn't see him. So he, he sees it early enough. He should look inside. He should look out here and like he should have a crease but because he doesn't take the first first threat first threat uh, it's, only, it's only a nine yard game but i think the lineman could do a better job here of just finding work right get your head around find somebody find somebody find somebody doesn't it's, it's a good play but from my vantage point i thought this was a home run so play action was kind of hit and miss uh for purdy so play action was hit or miss for the 49ers in this one, Brock was only 8 for 14, it averaged 4.9 yards per attempt. Um, I I would imagine he, he was double that yardage in the regular season. So here, the ball just has to come out sooner. They're going to try to get Kittle on a quick out route. As you can see, this is third down, or sorry, second down, and they don't get any yards off of play action pass. Like that can't happen. But if you watch Brock here, again, this is just playing faster. Not to say that he didn't, because we have evidence in this game that he did, but every down it has to be consistent. So now the ball's got to come out, like out. Just lob it to Kittle, throw it, and he'll pick it up now even. But because there are extra steps, it allows 
Trent McDuffie, the first rounder who can fly, to catch up with Kittle. As opposed to, so he makes, gets his head around, watch, one, two, three, four, five, and then the ball comes out. Realistically, the ball should be out now. He's He doesn't have his balance. Kittle catches the ball, turns upfield, and we are not talking about what we're about to talk about on the next play, which is a really rough, rough one. All right, so first off, it's third and four for the Super Bowl, and Ray and McLeod is on the field and not Debo Samuel. So clearly he's not 100%. So double slant is what they're going to come. Double slant, double slant. Purdy, after in the locker room on Tuesday, said that you know this ball should have gone to Brandon Ayuk. If you just look at the pre-snap alignment, whenever a safety has a slot receiver capped, that is the biggest tell that he's going to come. I don't think pretty recognize that, and I think that's where this play kind of falls apart, and that's before we get to the protection. So um, this is also muscle memory, and I, I could probably pull you 20 clips from the regular season where they run the double slant, and that second window is just wide open, and he's wide open. But it's also an all pro and he struggles to get off the line here. But aside from that, Purdy's doing what he's done all year. And he knows his double slant and he knows that second guy's gonna be open. He wasn't here, the ball gets tipped, so all of those things go wrong in that sense. And then we have to get to the protection part of the play. So let's watch Jake Brindle here. So he's pointing. 27, 27, 27. I actually think he points back. To, so, this is your third down back, by the way, 85. When it, when has he ever done that before this game? So, <laughs> a new position for one of your best players in the most critical downs of the game. So, how this should work, and it, you know that the slot blitz is coming. So, most dangerous man. He is going to slide out here. He is going to slide out here. You're gonna obviously you're gonna have the bigs on bigs. How it should how it should work is. McKivitz, um, Burford, Brindle, Banks, Williams, and he, as a protection back, scans and takes the extra rusher who's coming off the edge. I don't know if he just doesn't get the call or if it's just all brand new for him, but this is a blown block by Kittle because he ends up blocking the same guy Burford does. Like He needs to scan across the formation. He, look, they're all doing it. Everybody's blocking the, the person they need to. He's unblocked for a reason, because that's supposed to be the running back. And he doesn't, and you get a tip, and you have to punt on third and four. So just a, a brutal mistake at the worst possible time on both ends, right? The quarterback, muscle memory, he's throwing to the second guy. When in an ideal world, if we go back to the 22 angle, he acknowledges that the safety's capped. But how many times has he seen this, right? How many times has a 24-year-old seen this type of pressure? So, boom, ball's out now. Who knows what happens? Like, he's good enough to probably make him miss. Maybe it's an explosive play. Even if it's not, worst-case scenario, first down. But instead, the worst-case scenario, both throwing the ball and then from a protection standpoint. So, you get a bust. Um, you get an incomplete pass. You get a tip throw. And instead of staying on the field, chewing up the clock, and not giving the ball back to the other team, you have to set up for a field goal. This is going to be a play that eats at this team all year, I imagine, or sorry, all off season. Okay, so you have LeJerry Sneed guarding Charlie Warner. And remember how potent this has been, right? These little three-man stack, three-man bunches, three-man surfaces that they ran. Because of that, you're wasting, quote-unquote, wasting Sneed. You have Brent Ayuk on a safety. How do you think? This is going to turn out. It turns out the way everybody in the stadium thinks it's going to turn out. And you get an easy first down. It, honestly, it was, it was a crime that he did not get more involved in this sense. Okay, so I think they're trying to take a shot here. Debo's going to run a deep post. And he runs a really good route. Brian Ayuk's going to run up. And I think he runs out right. He gets jammed up pretty good here. So the Chiefs are going to blitz. And this is how you beat the blitz. You have to understand where your checkdowns are. And this is where Brock actually... He, this is one of his better traits where he understands when it's time to take a shot and when it's time to check it down. So I got guys in my face right away. What do I do? Go to my check down. 
second and five, second and six. McCaffrey, one on one in the open field, doesn't get a hand on him. And that's why you go out and get McCaffrey. This is why you're going to build around Brock because he makes plays like this. He's comfortable making plays like this. Um, the offensive line, they allow free rusher too. It's, they're probably going to have to lose. I mean, uh, they're not going to completely scrap this, but bringing the center across the formation to block an edge rusher did not work all game. And you got bailed out just because you have a better player right there. And going back to that third and two, um, earlier in the game, first of all, just run it left when in doubt, run behind 71. And second of all, run these, these toss plays, right? Give your, give Christian a head start. And this is what it looks like, but watch 84. Chris Conley did an, an amazing job when he was on the field in this game, whether it's covering kicks, catching passes, blocking as he does right here. Uh, Trent Williams blocks two players. He blocks him. Then he blocks him. Um, that's more like Trent Williams, right? And then there's Conley just taking the read and driving him. Okay, so it's second and 12, and they are relying on Debo Samuel to win one on one with a linebacker. And he cannot. So he struggles to cross Bolton's face right here. And now it seems like the play is dead. But Brock buys time, keeps his eyes down the field, and Kyle Uchek comes up with a catch. People thought that was a fumble. And I actually did too at first, but he's clearly just diving for the pylon, and that's how the ball goes. Uh, that's how he loses possession of the ball. It goes out of bounds there. But um, <laughs> there's Banks right away off the line. Gets beat. Thankfully, he has help. Pretty does a good job again, keeping his eyes down the field. That little look away right there throws the linebacker off, and they're able to pick up a first down. Okay, second and four. Haven't gotten a push running to the right all game. So what do you do? You run to the right in one of the biggest situations in, of your season. So on the day, the 49ers ran the ball left 15 times for 70 yards. They ran the ball right 11 times for 21 yards. Why? Why even give them a chance to mess this up? There is no 95 on the field. Why not run pull? Like, if you don't trust him to pull, okay, run the toss that you just ran, get him downhill. Think about these two players with your season on the line compared to these two players. Like, who are you trusting? And then it'll come down to him being one on one, which we just saw he's going to win. But he doesn't get a chance to make anybody miss one on one because the linemen, they can't get a push. I, I do not understand running right in this situation. If you lose running left, whatever you lose running left you can go down swinging like that so here's the next play last play of the season for the 49ers it's third and four and brock said he was trying to be careful with the ball on this one man another situation where there's just a bust and and this was pretty much the theme as you've seen all game so it feels like let's just watch brenna to the top actually he has the cornerback, all pro cornerback, mind you, commando crawling back to his feet. I'm not saying that he should have gotten the ball. I, I don't want to make that. I don't want to make it seem like that was the case at all. I'm just showing the game that he had. If you just isolate everything else, he was about as dominant as it gets. And the box, the box score will not show that. OK, let's go back to John Jennings. He runs a good route himself. A little return route. He's open. Obviously. Brock can't get there. You're waving your finger like you just didn't get beat for a touchdown. Like that wasn't a you thing. That was a line thing. Okay. This is where Spags is Spags. So Spags manipulates the protection. So by putting the linebacker on here, on this side of the line, he's forcing the 49ers to slide to our right, their left. Bust. Why? Because you don't have to slide. It's a half slide. Three, and then it's two over here. What it should work out is, how it should work out is, Burfer, the right guard, he's due. Step this way. So he steps here. He steps here. Doesn't happen. I know it looks like it's on the kivitz, but based on how everybody's stepping, 
Yeah, that is, it's, it should be a half slide. There's no reason for him to step down here because he's already counted for. He's head up. And this is where just, you know, playing the sport, playing the game a long time for Burford will come into play. I, I don't think they can give him another season because, I mean, it was evident they didn't trust him. They went out, they started Feliciano down the stretch. Uh, Feliciano wasn't great in this one. Burford obviously wasn't either, but the last play of your season is decided by a bust in protection. That that has to be tough to swallow. And honestly, you remember, you're always going to remember the last thing you see. So I, I would imagine we see a high pick, if not a, a free agent, come in and take right guard, maybe even right tackle as well. But I, I thank you guys for watching. This was an hour, going on an hour now, but it's a Super Bowl, right? This is the last time we have a chance to talk about the 2023 49ers. There was a lot of good in this game. Brock Purdy played well. Did he play well enough? The bottom line answer is no, because he left yards on the field. And that is true for Christian McCaffrey for fumbling. That is true for Debo Samuel for not consistently being able to get open. That is true for the offensive line. It's not just a Purdy McCaffrey or offensive line thing. It's true for Kyle Shanahan for not adapting, right? For not funneling his passing game through Brandon Ayuk, for not adjusting his running games from going away from the zone stuff where he was, they were clearly getting outworked up front and just letting his linemen pull. So, whew. It was a tough one, but again, I, I really appreciate everybody who's taking the time to watch my stuff um, throughout the course of the season. Going to get into free agency and draft now. I'm going to turn the page. I am going to get back to the defense because we cannot talk about, we can't not talk about the defense, right? But that's all for the offense, and thanks again. So like, uh, subscribe, comment, let me know if there's anything else you want to see.